balance point between day and night and light and dark, and I'll let her explain the rest. So without further ado, let's welcome Sarah Murphy. Phenomenal, and so my son told me 
Pope went to DC, New York, Philadelphia. You know the punchline? It's the Cowboys. Three <laughs> 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 <you> people left. <laughs>
Something really incredible is happening right now on this beautiful earth, and we're participating in it. And these big events bringing huge numbers of people together to do something good in the world, like, this is so new. This is so new. When's the last time that, well, besides 1979, but a hundred some thousand people came together to celebrate mass on the streets of Philadelphia, or 35,000 yogis gathered in Chennai, or 1,500 under the Eiffel Tower, and 30,000 in Times Square. And, and, and these, those are just the big gathering of people. There's also this incredible <coughs> channel material that's come forth. A Course in Miracles is, is uh, a, a beautiful channel work. And we have the channel work of Cryon and Seth and the Abraham material. Uh, Alice Bailey and Joaquul working in their partnership. How many of you are familiar with the work of Alice Bailey and Joaquul? Well, you're going to get to learn about it. <laughs> because that's my thing. And, um, and for Alice Bailey and Joaquul, Joaquul worked with Helena Blavatsky with the Secret Doctrine. Have you guys heard of the Secret Doctrine and the Theosophical Society that was founded based on that? Um, and, and then the Edgar Casey ARE, the Association of Research and Enlightenment. These are incredible things. It's bringing practical knowledge, but you know what those things basically <coughs> have in common is so much channeled or telepathically generated material coming forth. So our mind is being used for something in a different way um, than what has been happening before. So all of these things, the groups coming together to bring about peace on earth through whether it's a Catholic Mass or a Yoga Day or a Day of Peace celebration and the channel material and us using our mind in a different way. All of this signifies where we are in the New Age. And the New Age is the age of Aquarius. I know you've heard that song. I want to sing it, but I'll spare you. <laughs> I think with the microphone, it's dangerous. <laughs> my, both of my sisters really sing beautifully. But, uh, so this, the Aquarian age, and the Aquarian age coincides with the incoming seventh ray of divinity. So how many of you are familiar with the, the seven rays? <coughs> so there are so there are seven rays of divinity, seven types of energy that pervade the entire manifest universe. They're related to, if you're familiar with the, uh, the idea of the seven rishis of the throne, the seven archangels, um, the sacred number seven repeats again and again, and these seven energies touch and color, actually literally, and vivify everything from the floor to the table to the person to the dust money um, that's in the world, not on earth, but everywhere in the universe. So we're going to talk a little bit about what those rays of divinity are and then how, how that affects our world and how it affects our being, our personal self within the world. And then we'll that'll be a little esoteric and then we'll bring it back to something a little more practical and I was talking at the beginning about how we are driven by our subconscious processes. So we'll have a chance to uh, find some of our subconscious blocks and do an exercise to heal them. Sounds good? Yes. Yeah? All right. So you got to watch me. I keep looking at the clock because I can talk about this stuff until everybody's asleep. But I won't do that. I promise. So there are a couple of significances of the autumn equinox I mentioned before. The autumn equinox is the lower interlude in the annual cycle. So you know how when you do your meditation, so show of hands, meditation practice, yeah? Okay, so you do your meditation, you um, maybe, it depends on what form you use, but probably even if you're not using a form that does this specifically, it just happens naturally anyway, you get into your meditation, and for me, my mind has to like click through, and then I'm ready to settle down. And then I kind of find myself raising my vibration. And I'm trying, because of the practice that I'm following, to tap the higher mind and reach a higher idea. So I'm going up, and then I pause. 
<laughs> sometimes in my mind. <laughs> but then I come back. And then I come back down, and now I have an idea or an inspiration or thing that I, that I know that I didn't know before. I have maybe a picture or, or something that I can do with this higher idea. Is that, that, that familiar to you? That you, know, you go higher and there's like nothing, and then you come down and you're like, oh, I got the idea, and here's it kind of making it practical. And sometimes at first it's like, I don't even know how to make that thing practical, right? Does that make sense to you? Does that kind of resonate? So just like we have that in our own personal meditation, that higher interlude, lower interlude, that cyclical nature of things is happening all the time. We have every month the opportunity to do a meditation at the full moon, when it's not about the moon, right? It's about the moon got out of the way and we're getting all that solar energy. So our vibration can go higher so we can tap these awesome, different, higher energies. And then meditation at the new moon, becoming more popular now, um, an act of service. Meditation of the new moon, make it practical. How can I serve? What's the way of service? What's the path of taking those beautiful ideas and, and making them practical? So in the annual cycle, we have the building up phase in the spring. And then from the time of the spring equinox until the summer solstice is the higher interlude of the cycle. And at that time, we have three festivals. One is very familiar to the Christian world. It is Christmas. Easter. The Buddhist tradition has its biggest festival at the full moon in May. Anybody familiar with the Wesak festival? The Wesak festival is kind of the, the, the thing in the East, like we have our Easter, which of course has its uh, correlations with Wesak. And then, um, and then the, the full moon in June is uh, the World Invocation Day. It's not as popular right now, but that's the higher, those, those three months are the higher interlude. And we have these amazing spiritual festivals happening in different cultures. And now we come into the lower interlude. And what, what happens at the end of the calendar year? What do we have a lot of going on at the end of the calendar year? A lot of people doing festivals of light, the return of the light. Festival of the light, yep. Heralding the return of the light, yep. What happens to our um, charitable giving? Goes up. Goes way up, right? Everybody at, the, at this time, you know, end of the year, like, oh, I'm going to make my donations. About uh, volunteering, service work. Same deal. Becomes more, more popular, more common, yeah. So, so this is a time of manifesting, and we can see those like practical examples, but manifesting this, this stuff, the higher ideals, the good in the world. So this is a time of, of concretizing, of, of externalizing the beautiful ideals that we were able to tap during the higher interview. It's the time of the harvest. It's the time of the harvest. So way back six months ago we were planting, and now we're going to reap what we have sown esoterically and metaphysically. And that has significance for our seventh ray era too, because the seventh ray, which I alluded to earlier, is the ray of order, ceremonial order, and bringing the ideals that were pollinated into the emotional plane during the Piscean era under the sixth ray bringing those into manifestation on the physical plane in Earth. We're here at a really auspicious time, and we have some work to do. Um, the other significance, of course, of the autumn equinox is that it's the balance between light and dark. So exactly a week ago, we were at exactly that balancing point between light and darkness. And as we move into this lower interlude, in addition to our opportunity to be of service, we also have the opportunity to face our shadow self, find the blocks that we're carrying, and hopefully by being present to them, we can do some healing so that we don't have to be burdened by those things anymore. So <coughs> I'm excited to hear more about the seven rays of divinity. Good, because I can't.
can't wait to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> but first, I'm going to tell you about uh, Alice Bailey. So Alice Bailey was uh, a, a British woman. She, uh, I'm good. I They were a pretty high class family and she was raised by an aunt and uncle. She had one sister. And uh, her aunt and uncle were like, oh great, now we got two kids. <laughs> so not necessarily a whole lot of love there. And uh, they had governesses and, she, and Alice was kind of a brat. And one time she got mad at her governess and she threw all of the woman's jewelry down the toilet and flushed it. Ouch. Talk about being a brat. So when she was a teenager, she was sitting alone in the family parlor, and into the room walks a tall Indian man wearing a turban, and he turns to Alice Bailey and he says, uh, young lady, you have some important work to do, but if you don't get a hold of your temper, you're not going to be able to do it. So you need to get a hold of yourself. And he walked out again. <laughs> 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 